Well, it took a lot longer to get here than I thought, but this is the place. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, according to these crayons, there's definitely something going on in here. Time to bring out the photon pack. I left it in the Ecto-1. That's so far away. Oh! Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be checking out a haunted observatory. I mean, uh, we're going to be checking out the Ecto-1 from the Metal Earth Premium Series and telling you everything you need to know to get it built, like where the tricky bits, what tools you're going to need, and how the whole thing actually goes together. This is a build unlike any other, and it's definitely pretty complicated. I'm not going to be going in here until I get the proper tools, so why don't you guys go back in time and see how this whole thing started while I start my trek back. Package. And just like that, we begin our build of the Metal Earth Premium Series Ecto-1. And probably one of the hardest Metal Earth builds we've ever done, at least to date. This thing has everything in it, from cones to cylinders to really oddly shaped details and some concave pieces that we have to line up very precisely in order for everything to look right. It's not an easy build, and if you're new to metal model building, you might want to try some other builds first to get some of those details down before attempting this guy here. It really is that hard. So with that being said and understood, I think it's a good time for us to touch on what tools we're going to need to be able to build this monster. First up, we have our nippers here. These are great for taking out all of our pieces from our sheets of metal. And if you don't have a good pair of these, I highly recommend getting a good set. Next up, we have our tweezers. These guys here are great for shaping some of our smaller details and also are pretty good for reaching in and grabbing some of the tabs that we need to secure, either bending or twisting them. Speaking of shaping some of our details, one of my favorite tools for this build to use was our metal time pliers. These guys were fantastic for shaping some of our really difficult shaped details. I was really impressed with these with how easy I was able to be able to bend everything and I highly recommend getting a small pair just like this for you at home. Next up we have our mandrill. Now the mandrill here is great for getting all of our cylinder pieces. We can wrap them around different sizes here and get the correct one that we need. I always highly recommend starting with a bigger size and then working your way down to the proper size that you need. This way all the metal gets bent and you don't get any teardrop shaping. Another great tool for cylinders but also for shaping some of our concave details is a dapping punch. These guys come in various different sizes and because of that they're really good for wrapping our pieces around but this little top here also helps us get some of that finer detail if we need to bubble a piece of metal out trust me you're gonna need that but if you can't find a dapping punch a good old fondant set will do you just as good these guys are great for again getting all those little concave details and kind of making the metal less flat and more kind of 3d I highly recommend these tools for kind of upping your game when 3D metal models. And with this particular kit, being that we're getting a lot of really kind of oddly shaped details, these guys here are great. Now as always, these are just our suggestions, and you really don't need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the build done. But of course, having all of these tools will make your life a lot easier, especially with this guy here. All right, let's get to the build. Now, I know what you're thinking. All this time, there's been some B-roll running in the background. This can't possibly be the first couple of steps to the Ecto-1. You're wrong. They throw us right into the detail fire, and this let us burn there for a little bit, pretty much all the way until about step 30. And even that one has some interesting stuff for us. Yes, the spider box is a real thing, and trying to get those exactly right can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Just make sure that you kind of match the details the best you possibly can, and try not to warp the little rectangles. They're so easy to do, and once you do it, 
they're near impossible to get completely straight again, even if you use some of the tactics from my other videos using some really big pliers. These guys just don't want to unwarp, which the metal is actually an interesting point to bring up real quickly. It seems with this build, some parts are a little bit thinner than others, which I know sounds a little bit weird, but there's definitely some pieces here that are a lot easier to break than others. So be mindful when you're handling some of these pieces and kind of treat it like one bend metal instead of the whole 10 bend metal that we're used to. Ah, step 12, part 31. This is a piece that we're gonna encounter quite a few times throughout our build. And it's a good idea to get acquainted about how to shape it correctly so you're not struggling and creating a big detail mess. My personal suggestion would be to try to make these as uniform as possible by grabbing one leaf at a time and matching it as we go. It's really important with this build that we try to keep all of our details that are alike very similarly shaped. Otherwise, they stand out and it will make the whole thing kind of look a little bit weird. So really take your time with these pieces and if you're gonna make them really kind of concave, then make them all concave. If you're gonna make them a little bit skinnier and a little less ballier, well then make them all a little bit less skinnier and a lot less ballier. Step 19, part 60. This was a piece that gave me a really hard time and it's probably because of the instructions. Yeah, normally I can kind of take those shapes and fold them in my head and see how the whole thing kind of is needed to be done before I actually do it. In this particular case, I wasn't able to do that. And I looked at this thing and it just kind of melted my brain. So I had to stare at it for a few minutes. And after I did that, I tried to go to one side and work it to the picture and then slowly went to the other side and worked it to the picture. And eventually I got there. I had to take my time here though and really think through the process. And I actually have a three part video on how to build the Ecto-1 where we go into detail about how to build this particular piece. If you need help with it, I highly recommend checking it out and that way you get a full understanding about how to do this here. I can't emphasize this enough. Make sure you take your time with this particular piece. Getting it just right is quite important to the end model. Moving on to some headlights in step 20. The first two headlights that we have to do are quite simple. We just need to shape them around the edges like we do with some of our other pieces. Where things get interesting is with the next two pieces, 67 and 68. These funky headlights need to be shaped in about three different steps. The first step would be shaping the outside of our light. The second one would be adding that 3D effect to the inside of the light. And then finally, we want to connect the tabs on the outside, bringing the whole thing together to a nice package. If anything is out of alignment, don't be afraid to take one of your mandrills and kind of work it in there a little bit to get a nice edge. You don't want any sharp edges on this build. There's very few sharp edges on this build. Most things are kind of rounded. And I know that's kind of a hard thing to achieve with metal model sheets. But if you take your time and kind of work it into a mouse pad, you might find it a little bit easier than you think. Woo! 
boy, we're getting into our trunk and roof details. These ones are interesting because what we need to do is kind of shape each individual petal while also keeping it concaved and making a really neat 3D effect without having any gaps. Yeah, it's about as complicated as I just tried to explain it there. You really need to take your time with this piece. And I recommend starting on one petal and kind of shaping it the way you like it and then working on to the next piece, especially when it comes to our roof. This one is kind of an interesting part because it won't stay necessarily the shape you need it to stay in while it's at this phase. When we actually move on to connecting the roof onto the Ecto-1, that's when you'll see a big difference in how the shaping actually works. But it's still a good idea to make sure this is shaped as well as possible before attaching it so you don't struggle later. Oh boy, our side panels. These ones are quite tricky because not only do we need to make sure that all three pieces are similarly shaped and have a 3D effect to them, but also the tops of them have to be completely curved without any stress marks. Yeah, it's quite difficult. And Metal Earth has actually made a lot of little cuts there to try to help you along the way. But those little cuts can kind of be a double-edged sword sometimes. I highly recommend taking a dapping set and rolling it through the top piece first or even taking a long mandrel of some kind or a marker and rolling the top piece just to try to do your best to not get that to have a card edge. I've seen some models out there with a hard edge and it really does take away from the overall look of the Ecto-1. So with this piece here, it's very important that we make sure that all of these have a proper curve and that you take your time with it so that everything matches up correctly. Also, it recommends here that we bend our tabs when connecting these three panels. I don't recommend doing that. As a matter of fact, I recommend just twisting them so that they stay in place and they don't get weak as you move on with the build. If you bend them, you will find that the side panels tend to flap around a little bit, as you'll see in my video here. Later on down the road though, you will need to bend these tabs back into the proper shape because if you have them twisted, the model won't go together. There's some parts that kind of get in the way. So keep that in mind. For right now, twist them. Later, untwist them and secure them with a bend. Aw, oh, aren't those windshield wipers so cute? Now it's time to move on to our hoses. Our hoses are formed by picking one side, either the top or bottom, and then shaping each side of the circle until they kind of meet up. Personally, I use my mandrill to kind of help me get started. And then I used my tweezers and pliers to help me round out all of my pieces. And when it came to our tab parts, I tried to make sure those were as straight as possible so it was easier for us to be able to connect them into the Ecto-1. Again, all of these are with a really nice twist. I don't recommend bending these ones because the detail here needs to stay in place. The hardest part of the hose is actually at the bottom where it attaches onto the Ecto-1. These last four, I'll call them leafs, need to be shaped only halfway, while the rest of them need to be complete circles. This is a little bit tricky and a little uncomfortable, but once you actually put it onto the Ecto-1, it makes a lot more sense and you'll see how it's supposed to be done. You can always take your details and match them up to your model to see how they're gonna go on to see if everything is actually lining up. And if it's not, take it off, make a little bit of an adjustment and go back to it. I have a confession to make. That is the uh, 
part that I broke. Yeah, the antenna. Of all the pieces on here to break, the antenna was it. And that's because the metal was extremely thin. I bent it once and then twisted it. And when I twisted the actual piece, it felt like it broke as soon as I did that. This was incredibly unfortunate. And when you go through the entire build to have one little piece at the end break, it is kind of devastating. But you know, we have a lot of different solutions to be able to fix this. For one, it was only one tab of two that broke. And yes, that can be a little bit hard to keep in place, but, if, but because it's the antenna and it lays on top of the light, it's not that big of a deal. If you're interested though in fixing 3D metal model parts, I highly recommend checking out our Instagram and TikTok where I post shorts all the time about how to fix these kind of things and also show off some other projects that you might be interested in as well. Shameless self promo. Now, let's go ahead and finish this guy up, why don't we? one no parking that wasn't here before toronto how about you guys go back to the workbench while i go pay a visit to some friends I'm pounding my ecto one they thought they could keep it from me and boom there we have it the metal earth premium series ecto one in all of its glory yes this build was a lot of fun to build but very difficult in that it took quite a bit of time to be able to get all of this together with its variety of details to put here. And I would definitely not recommend this for any beginner out there because of how difficult it truly is. Trying to get just these panels lined up correctly is very challenging, especially because you have to match all the borders exactly in order for them not to stand out. Even with me having multiple different Metal Earth models under my belt, I found this very challenging, especially with some of the other details here on the side and with some of the light details here not lining up exactly. I think this is probably because I put some of the wrong pieces in place. Sometimes when you take multiple pieces out and you lay them on a table, it can be kind of confusing exactly which one's supposed to go where. That's completely my own doing, but I won't be surprised if we see a lot of people out there doing very similar things. The other part I wanna talk about here is this little rear lights. These rear lights here look great, but trying to keep them 3D here on the side, especially this little silver piece here is very challenging. And I won't be surprised to find a lot of people have flattened them just like I have. This was not on purpose. It just kind of happened when I was putting everything together. And it feels like the metal here is a little bit weaker than what we're used to. Like I said earlier, I broke the antenna here and was able to repair it with some UV resin. And I have a short on that if you're interested in seeing how that was done, but it was really a pain in the butt to try to get everything exactly the way I wanted it. Am I super happy about this build? Yeah, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself and what I was able to achieve, but could I have done better? I feel like I could have. And this is kind of why I don't recommend this build for beginners out there. It's really just too complicated for someone who's never tried a Metal Earth model before. But if you have multiple Metal Earth models under your belt and you're looking for something a little bit more challenging, I would say check out the Metal Earth Premium Series Ecto-1. You will not be disappointed. All right, Groovers, that brings us to the end of our episode. I had a really good time building the Ecto-1 with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well because we have all kinds of really cool content coming on in the future and I would love to have you there. 
Are you looking to pick up your own Ecto-1 and having a hard time finding it? Well, check out the Groove Builder store. We have all kinds of models on there at great prices with fast shipping worldwide. Until next time, keep building. All right, I'm parking you somewhere safe so you don't get towed away again. Thank <laughs> you.